The murky, gloomy black sphere at hand possesses an extraordinary ability to resurrect the dead, however, in exchange for this resurrection, the revived individuals are compelled to participate in a deadly game where they must accumulate points by eliminating extraterrestrial monsters intent on invading Earth within a specified time frame. Those who successfully complete the mission and reach 100 points are presented with two choices. Either revive another player of their choosing or erase all memories and gain freedom. Those who fail to reach 100 points but remain alive are granted a new lease on life to continue in the next round. Will they be able to survive and overturn the game, choosing to exit? The film begins with an unstoppable, speeding train. Two young men trapped under the railway tracks are immediately transported to a white room. Strangely, their bodies show no signs of injury, and the horrifying scene they experienced earlier seems to have never occurred. Kay and Kato discover, amidst unfamiliar faces in the room, a peculiar black sphere behind them. The location is not far from the city center, and all exits from the room are securely locked. After a brief conversation, everyone becomes more bewildered when they realize they all feel as if they have died. While pondering how they arrived here, the mysterious black sphere emits a green laser beam, a foot slowly materializes in midair, followed by the naked body of a girl. Kato, in a kind gesture, lends his jacket to the girl, and Kay warns a vest-clad person against any inappropriate advances. Before they can fully process the situation, the black sphere suddenly activates, accompanied by a peculiar song. On the screen, text appears, informing them that they are all already dead, and this everybody is under its control. Following that, an assignment was immediately issued, requiring everyone to go and kill an extraterrestrial creature referred to as the Onion Man. Subsequently, the mysterious black sphere split into two parts, one side provided players with various peculiar weapons, while the other contained black suitcases, each labeled with the name of an individual. Inside the sphere, a bald-headed man emerged. The identity and connection of this man to the black sphere remained shrouded in mystery. Without waiting for answers, K checks his suitcase, finding a black, tight-fitting outfit. Although peculiar, when Kashimoto wears it, she looks remarkably sexy. Surprisingly, the silent young man is already wearing the same outfit. Before they can comprehend, everyone's bodies start to disappear, and they are teleported to a street. As everyone contemplates returning home, the previously silent young man, Nishi, speaks up, revealing that they are not dead. This is just a reality TV show. Completing the assigned task earns them 100,000 yen, with a grand prize of 10 million yen. K notices the onion head creature observing them from a distance. Nishi explains that the first one to kill the extraterrestrial can claim the reward alone. The person in the vest rushes forward, followed by two others. They quickly corner the creature in a warehouse. However, the onion head seems weaker than expected. The person with the vest attempts to shoot it, but to no avail. Suddenly, the extraterrestrial creature explodes seconds later. Kato, wanting to stop the massacre, is too late. The creature's onion head father appears, revealing the true target. Witnessing the brutal death of the small onion head, the father demands retribution. Kato, trembling, loses his balance, and the father onion head threatening him. Kashimoto, wearing the black outfit, swiftly intervenes, using its enhanced strength to push the creature away. It turns out this outfit is in bat. TLE armor, capable of enhancing one's strength. However, the extraterrestrial creature proves challenging to defeat. It threw one, sending two individuals crashing into the wall. K is also present but, due to his cowardice, he hides in a corner. The alien creature steadily approaches K. Just as it's about to strike, a cluster of chains suddenly wraps around the creature, courtesy of Nishi, who had been patiently waiting to strike. Nishi wants K to finish off the creature, but K hesitates. In a swift move, Nishi, with a cold demeanor, takes care of the extraterrestrial being. It's evident this isn't Nishi's first encounter with such creatures. With the mission completed, the survivors are transported back to the room. People start questioning Nishi about what happened. His answer adds to the confusion. Nishi reveals that the Black Sphere resurrects the dead, provides weapons to fight aliens, and awards points for completing tasks. Those who die in battle won't be resurrected again. As he finishes speaking, the Black Sphere emits a blinding light. When Kay wakes up, he finds himself back home. The events of the previous night unfold like a nightmare. Kay rushes to the subway station and discovers a strange accident announcement about himself. He hurriedly goes to the battle scene, only to encounter Kashimoto, who is also there. She is reluctant to go home, fearing she might see her own corpse. K, taking the initiative, invites her to his home. The idea of two attractive individuals living together sparks some thoughts, but K decides against it, knowing Kashimoto is a friend of his buddy Kato. Meanwhile, Kato contemplates the strange events and is unexpectedly transported to the same room. Three new individuals, in addition to those who survived the previous encounter, appear in the room. 
Without further ado, the Black Sphere presents the second mission. This time, they are tasked with killing a radio creature. Kay and Kato urge everyone to quickly put on the provided outfits and get equipped. However, the teleportation happens too fast, leaving two My Grandmother individuals unprepared. They move up in a parking lot, separated from each other. The frightened boy, running without caution, collides with an alien and unintentionally drops its radio tower. The creature retaliates with a laser beam, resulting in a double kill of two My Grandmother. At the same moment, Kay is also teleported to the parking lot and sees the alien. However, it doesn't look like a creature. Instead, it resembles a toy model. Kay wants to shoot, but the gun hasn't finished teleporting yet. The alien starts absorbing the laser into its mouth, ready to shoot. When Kay's gun finally arrives, it's still a step too slow. Kay is blasted away, luckily saved by the armor. Before they can process this revelation, it prepares for another attack. However, this time, the shot is not aimed at Kay but at Nishi who is stealthily nearby. Subsequently, the creature flies upward and delivers a powerful blow, sending Nishi tumbling down into a pit. It ruthlessly assaults Nishi, causing his exoskeleton to start leaking fluid. The damage sustained renders the combat a RMOR ineffective, unable to withstand any further attacks. Kato jumps down to help, relying on the enhanced strength of the combat armor. He quickly immobilizes the alien, preventing further damage, on the other side, Kei tends to Nishi's injuries, who is left in a battered state. As Nishi suggests Kei earn 100 points to resurrect him, Kei still hesitates. When everyone thought the battle had ended, the extraterrestrial creature woke up, becoming more ferocious. Thanks to the protection of the new combat armor, people reluctantly adapted to the fight. This time, Kei attracted its attention, and the creature turned to attack him, akin to a jealous sister seeking revenge. As it was about to unleash its devastating attack on Kei, he accidentally activated his suit. With a powerful punch, Kei sent the creature flying several meters away, causing it to suddenly stand up. It grabbed Kei tightly, preparing to fire a laser, but Kei quickly outsmarted it by shoot the gun into its mouth. A loud explosion followed, and the extraterrestrial creature disintegrated. The mission was completed, and people began to be teleported. However, Kay was severely injured, worsened by the recent explosion, leading to a series of car explosions in the parking lot, turning it into a sea of flames. Unable to teleport, Kay could only lie there, awaiting death, while Kato and others in the room were extremely worried. In the final seconds, Kay was luckily teleported back to the room, without a scratch. The task concluded, and Kay received 7 points. At this point, he remembered Nishi's words and asked the Black Sphere what would happen if someone reached 100 points. The Black Sphere displayed a shocking message. Reaching 100 points allowed erasing all memories and regaining freedom, or resurrecting a deceased player. Later, Kay woke up at home again, now wearing the combat suit. Feeling bold, he decided to test the suit's strength by bending the frying pan the director provided, it unexpectedly distorted, jumping off a high step, Kay soared over the roof, landing without a scratch due to the increased body strength and absolute defensive capabilities. Confident, Kay believed this mission would be easy. However, upon being teleported back to the room, they welcomed new members. The next mission required them to defeat a fire creature, Kay arrogant, assuring everyone that he could handle it alone. As the mission began at a museum, the statue at the entrance suddenly came to life, attacking everyone. A scared girl ran inside and locked herself in. Kay advised Kato to quickly move everyone away. Kay single-handedly completed the mission by easily defeating the slow-moving fire creature. As the countdown in the room ended, everyone expected to be teleported back. However, this time, they were not, and the countdown started again. A girl with wounds all over her body emerged from the museum. It turned out the true enemy was still inside. Kei, Kato, and Kashimoto cautiously entered the museum. In a moment of inattention, they were attacked by a statue with a thousand arms, causing severe injuries to Kei. At this moment, Kato rushes in to save Kei. Now, it's only Kato battling the creature with a thousand arms. However, the monster moves with agility. Its speed surpasses that of the firing gun. Essentially, Kato is no match for it. Just as the creature is about to launch an attack, Kashimoto leaps forward to intercept a fatal blow for Kato. Kashimoto's sacrifice drives Kato into a frenzy, losing all rationality. He unsheathes his sword and charges towards the creature with a thousand arms, determined to fight it once more. However, the disparity in strength is too great. Witnessing his friend's death, Kei activated the combat suit's combat energy once more, rushing at the statue not for a direct attack but to retrieve a weapon. Kei shot at the creature, but it quickly used its thousand swords as a shield, breaking one small Buddha statue that unexpectedly grew larger. The Buddha statue, revealed to be another creature, pierced through the museum, and Kei, unable to dodge the weapon, lost his gun. 
In this critical moment, Kato, despite his severe injuries, stood up to shield Kei from the attack. However, when Kei was about to deliver the final shot, the Buddha statue swallowed him whole. Fortunately, it only swallowed him without chewing. Inside the statue, Kei shot wildly, destroying the statue and ending the battle. After that, Kei was teleported back to the room, but Kato and Kashimoto were nowhere to be found. They had died in the battle. Kei, grieving their deaths caused by his own arrogance, returned to his life with a heavy heart. Walking near the railway where he and Kato had an accident, a train was approaching. At the last moment, a hand reached out to rescue him. It was Izumi, a girl who secretly had feelings for him. Taking advantage of the situation, Izumi confessed her feelings to Kei, boosting his morale. With this emotional boost, Kei rose again. Knowing that completing the mission with 100 points would resurrect them all, the mysterious music played, and a new mission began. The video concluded here, promising the audience to meet again in the next video.